talk about the future of motorsport because we're worried about it, aren't we? I was. But then I drove the Porsche Mission R. <laughs> G-Force. But before we go any further, let's have a look around it because first and foremost, it looks fantastic. But it's also small, it's compact, it's really low. It's been chasing a 911 turbo around the circuit and the 911 looks tall and ungainly next to this. And isn't it lovely to see a car running on big, chunky tyres, a bit of sidewall on them. It just looks sort of hunkered and proper. And I know they've said that this car sort of heralds the next Cayman, but I'm not really interested in that. What I want to know is what it says about the future of motorsport and where that's going. So it's got some really interesting technology built in. Let's start down here looking at these vents here because they're part of the aero package for the car. They can open and close. And as they do that, they adjust the roll and yaw of the car by letting the air pass more cleanly through or get closed off. And they work in conjunction with the rear spoiler, not to deliver more downforce, but to clean up the aero so you have a more slippery performance at high speed. It accelerates a bit quicker, higher up. And it is capable of high speed. Top speed's 187 miles an hour, not 62 in two and a half seconds. Personally, I reckon it would probably go a fair bit quicker than that. I think Porsche being a bit conservative. Right, let's go round to the front wheel because that's the next interesting area on this because the Mission R is four-wheel drive. Motor on the front, motor on the back, and they're taken from the Taycan Turbo S, but with a difference. Rather than that car's 800-volt architecture, these run 900-volt architecture, and that's a technology that Porsche Motorsport is already familiar with because it's the same as the 919 Hybrid. This car has been developed and engineered by the same team, and that means those motors develop more power than they do in the Taycan. In fact, quite a bit more power. 429 horsepower on the front, 644 on the back. That's 1,073 horsepower in total, which is more than enough. But more interesting, I think, than the way it goes is the way it stops. Because rather than just using massive disc brakes, they concentrate on the regeneration. And to a great extent, you can charge this car plugged in at 350 kilowatts, which is super fast but it can regenerate at 800 kilowatts. It can get power back into the batteries nearly as quick as it can send it out. And that is potentially transformative because it means that the car gains so much more power under braking all the time. Remember the VW IDR Pikes Peak record holder? That had a range of about 12 miles. The plan for the Mission R is that it has the same performance as a 911 GT3 Cup car not just lap times, but endurance. It promises to be able to race flat out for 30 to 40 minutes. So we talked about the front wheels, but the next interesting thing is what goes on in the middle of the car because it's built around a steel space frame chassis and that's not particularly interesting. It's just, it's a concept car and they've carried that over. It was just a piece they had lying around. But what is much more interesting is what happens up top because rather than having a steel roll cage, it has a carbon roll cage. And at the moment, that's not allowed by the FIA regulations. But this car isn't meant to abide by current regulations. It's meant to look into the future and think about what will motorsport be doing in six years' time. So it almost has this carbon exoskeleton of protection around the driver, and it's built into the seat as well. And the seat is a massive one-piece construction, so it's super safe. And it looks great. When you're in there, you've got these big panels of light coming in from above. So it feels very futuristic and different. And there's more space. You haven't got a roll cage inside the chassis blocking your view or being awkward to get in and out. So you have a better environment for the driver. And then behind him, tucked in here, is the battery pack. And it's not a skateboard battery pack because if you put a skateboard under it, the driver's gonna sit higher, the roof line's gonna be higher, it's not gonna look as good. So instead you have a chest battery behind the seats. And it's quite big, about 250 kilo pack, but 80 kilowatt hours capacity, which gives this thing reasonable range. But I need to show you the best bit, which is found round the back of the car, because there's two things I really want to show you around here, and then neither of them is the aerodynamics, which are amazing. But I wanna show you this, which is a lovely design touch, this fantastic 3D light beam all the way around the back. How good would that look in a night race? But the other thing I think is brilliant is that you can see all the mechanical bits on display. You never see this in electric cars. They always feel one-dimensional as a result. But here you can see the motor, 
the gearbox, how it's all linked into the suspension. It's just brilliant. Right, lots of race teams running around. I think I'm still on charge at the moment because I've got a battery grade here, currently at 53%. It's going up fast though. You can charge this at 350 kilowatts. You get everything nice and warm and the charge can absolutely fire in. So I just sit here and wait for some charge to arrive. It's really futuristic in here. It's fantastic. I mean, the steering wheel, as far as these are things are conventional, is conventional. But, you know, all I've got to do is twist one dial and I'm off. I, the rest of it, I don't know what's going on. So all I have to watch out for in here is the green light down here. Once I've got, as long as I've got that green light, I'm fine. If it goes red for any reason, I have to stop completely. Wherever I am, stop and then don't get out of the car. However, if this screen goes red, then I have to get out of the car really quickly. There's a lot of safety briefings around electric <laughs> racing cars. Okay, all sorted. And away we go. In Porsche's unique Mission R. So I'm chasing a 911 Turbo S around. I think it's so I don't get too carried away. <laughs> So it's built around a steel space frame, but really that's not important because it's not designed for anything particular at the moment other than putting on a hell of a show. So much grip through that corner, love it. Changes of direction, oh, it's got more than enough grip for whatever power these electric motors can deliver. Two of them, one on the front, one on the rear. Total power is 1,073 horsepower, which when you've only got 1,500 kilos to move, feels like, that feels like quite a lot of power. Same power to weight ratio, in fact, as a Bugatti Chiron. It's a one-off this, it's completely unique, so we need to be slightly careful with it. Oh, I'm really enjoying this. I mean, the noise isn't much, but actually from inside, you've still got all that electric noise. It's quite compelling and the view, and it's just so futuristic in here. Well, I've driven the VW IDR, and that's the most accelerative thing I've ever driven, and this isn't, you know, not 60, two and a half seconds. This is not far off. It's got a top speed of 187 miles an hour, but I'm not gonna be hitting that around here. Don't need to, though. It's all about the acceleration. It's an electric car. That's what they do well. Flat out, and on the brakes and yeah the pedal is a little bit numb but my god I mean it's a properly developed thing this I mean they say it's a concept but really this is Porsche going let's have a look at what we could do and what we can learn from this oh, I love this I just can't believe it's just regeneration on the brakes and it can regenerate so much of this which means it can just run for longer. You don't have to worry about preserving it because the brakes aren't getting hot because they're not being used. It's all happening electrically. It's got such punch and traction and the balance of the motors, it doesn't feel like it's gonna do anything scary. It feels so planted and stable. And yet, yeah, it's maybe not quite motorsport polished in terms of the way the suspension works. It hops and skips a bit, but it's a concept car. Oh. What do you expect? These things normally don't know better than five miles an hour around a car park. And here's one turning in pretty competitive lap times. Can you just imagine what a gaggle of these would look like as an F1 support race? I think it'd be terrific. I think that was the way to convince the Formula One drivers. Put them in these. Do you remember the old M1 Pro car that BMW did? At the end of the 1970s, they used to put F1 drivers in BMW M1s. That's what they want again, isn't it? A bit of this. It'd be fascinating. You can feel how much pressure these motors are putting on the tyres. That's quite an experience. And it feels so cool in here. This glass roof and the carbon pillars and everything. Porsche was asked to imagine what you know, the future of racing looked like. I really like the look of it. What a privilege this is. But this is all theoretical because the Porsche Mission R is a concept car. And sometimes concept means here in six months, and sometimes it means this is something we could do. This, 
I suspect is probably somewhere in the middle. So let's speculate. Imagine this as a one-make race series. 40 years ago, BMW did. They had the M1 Pro Car Series, and it was a precursor to them going into Formula One itself. Let's hope Porsche sees this the same way. <laughs>